Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 2 series. Jesus and Mary discuss Being a Student of Love, filmed on the 28th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. So this was Corny's homework. Do you remember that? Yeah, everyone got that? So, Avera? We just have the mic, sorry. So that's the homework. We'll just leave that there for a few more minutes so that those of you who haven't got Corny's homework. Yeah. Um, it's just a question about the homework. Is this yep. all for tonight? <laughs> I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I'm going into meltdown. I can't all do all this today. <laughs> so, so what's the feeling? See, so you'd be good to feel that feeling, right? Whatever that feeling is, a feeling of being overwhelmed. Now, what did Mary say? How was the will muscle going to be stretched? It had to be have overwhelming stimuli. So we're giving, giving you some. So you're saying it's all for tonight? Yeah, because you have more homework tomorrow night. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mind you, we believe that this kind of homework is the homework you do almost every day in your life. You know, like whenever I'm looking at issues where I'm not, where I know I can see my faith isn't strong, then I, I focus on that issue. You know, I look at it, I measure it. I do all the things like that. I feel like... I'm going to have to fail this because there's too many things. So feel that feeling too. You can't fail a relationship with God without, but except by not engaging it. Yeah. Right. If you're going to just say, I'm overwhelmed, so what I'm going to do is not engage anything at all, then, then I think that's a big cop-out actually. You'd be better off just engaging one of these questions and, and than, than all of them, if you rather than giving up. What was the second thing that Mary said to avoid on the list with developing will? Can you remember it? It was giving up, wasn't it? Which is what you attempted to do. As soon as you see there's a lot to do, you want to give up. I, I sort of felt like there were things that really, really applied to me that I just wanted to focus on. So focus on them. But then we I don't, thought I wouldn't be doing we're not, all We're not controlling you here. We're giving you some homework. Whether you do it or not is up to your use of your, your will. We don't, how you use your will is up to you. We're not going to control it. We're not going to come tomorrow and say, all right, did, you, did Elvira do her homework? Stand uh, up all those. Stand up all those who didn't do their homework. Right, yes, yes, five demerit points for you, two demerit. <laughs> what does that sound like? Doesn't that sound like, well, besides sounding like school, it sounds like a punishment system. Uh, we're not interested in a punishment system. We're trying to inspire you to take personal responsibility for your life. If you only want to answer one question, only answer one question. But understand, if you answer one question, you're not going to progress as well as if you answer them all. Uh, and that's your choice. That's your will. That's your choice. That You have that decision to make. How you engage this depends upon you. Remember that's what we said? What's going to get this is going to get down to is how you engage this for the rest of your life. This is what we do. Like you, you, you observe us and you think that we don't do a lot of things, but that we do. We do this all the time. <laughs> like that's why we've progressed. Right? So you can't then say to me, "Oh, well, you know, AJ's got to be a bad teacher because I'm not progressing." No, you're a bad student. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not progressing. I'm a student, you're a student. Well, I'm not a teacher. So forget this idea that I'm a teacher. I'm a student. I'm a student of God. This is what I've had to do to become a student of God. All right? I'm suggesting you do the same. You'll have a lot of joy if you do it. At the moment, most of you don't even believe that though. So you've got a lot of un faith, your lack of faith feelings to feel about that. Oh, it's never going to happen for me. All those lack of faith feelings, yeah? yeah? Let them come up. So tonight, Elvira, if you get to the first question and you just cry and that's the only homework you do, that would be fantastic. You'll come along tomorrow with one emotion, 
left you and so therefore able to receive the truth on that subject. That would be fantastic. I, I think that would be a great result. But feel it. Feel how you feel overwhelmed. Yeah? I'll just load the other questions while you were talking. Sure, uh, I can do that actually. Yeah, it's okay. easier for me probably. Yours was talking... Uh, will to love. Will to love, strengthening the... Will Last to slide. Love. Whoopsie, bit too fast. Uh, be the last one, baby. Yeah, let me just... Uh, go to... Whoops. A bit hard to do it on my own. Go to slight homework. There we go. There we go. That's Mary's. Thanks, darling. Okay. AJ? Yeah. Yep. Where are up to? Sorry. I'm Emma. Emma. Um, I've already looked at a couple of those questions and, and I feel really stuck already. Like, I just don't know what, how I would answer. Um, Can so I suggest that for any of you who feel stuck answering one of these questions, you just don't want to answer them. So what I would do is I'd go, why don't I want to answer it? Ask yourself that question. So if you read one of these questions, you go, oh, I've got no idea how to answer that question. Try, instead of answering the question, ask yourself this question, why don't I want to answer that question? What, what's the, my feeling about that question? Does that make sense? Yeah. That's all you have yeah. to do. So I was going to ask whether we should pray to God about that. Or well, no, you need to first find out why you're resistive to answering the question. Like Now, sure, you can pray about that, but you need to know for yourself why you're resistive. And, and if you're so resistive that you won't even look at why, then I doubt whether God's going to be able to show you why. Right? Our will is going to have to be engaged to know from God before God is going to tell us something. So let yourself find out why you feel that resistive to answer those, the questions that you can't answer. Well, I I think it would be that I, I'm worried about getting, getting it wrong. That's so there you go. There's one of the reasons. It's always the thing is I'm worried I'm going to get it wrong. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to come along to Emma and go, Emma, what was your answer? Wrong. It's wrong. Stand in the corner. God doesn't do that with you either, right? But some of these things have happened in your childhoods, right? This is why you get all of these complications about just doing a simple exercise. <laughs> Right? To us, this is just a simple exercise we do every day. We don't punish ourselves about the result. We don't hurt ourselves because we don't know the answers. You know, or any of those things that you're doing. We don't do any of those things. But we do do these things regularly. Yeah. So it's a good emotion to start with. Remember that was also the emotion I discussed with you earlier in the day. Your fear of other people's feelings, opinions is a huge fear that causes you to not act. Yeah. The yeah. thing is, I could easily go have a good cry about that tonight. So go and have a good cry about that tonight. But you, um, you just say that I don't, I'm not really releasing anything? Well, not, not if you're not feeling the choice you're making. You need to have a good cry about that, I agree. But you've got to, and, and by the way, you've now got a microphone in your hand, something you said at the start of the day you would never do. That's pretty good, I think. So that's, that's you confronting one of these fears. That's you taking an action. That's you using your will to engage. That's wonderful. You've got you to notice when you do these things and also notice when you're trying to get away from things. You need to do both. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions before we go? Yep, everyone's got their homework there. See, what we're trying to encourage you to do with all this is to actually be like pretty good with your self-analysis, you see? But you need to be also like non-judgmental with your self-analysis. See, too many of you, when we talk about self-analysis, you get judgmental on yourselves. So that's, that's never going to help you. It's never going to help you. 
What you need to do is be able to clearly analyse yourself without judgement. Because then you have, a good, you have a very good idea where you are. But do it without judgement. As soon as you judge yourself, now you're doing exactly what your parents did to you. Exactly what your environment, all your growing years has done to you. Right? They've all analysed you with judgement. We don't, we don't need to do that. We need to give that up, emotionally give that up. So if that's a problem that you face, feel the reasons why you do it to yourself. Because you don't need to do it here. Just be honest with yourself. Without judgement. Right. What I find, uh, like to be frank with you, it took me many years to learn that. To be honest with myself without judgement. Because I, I'd, I'd look at myself and I'm, I'm pretty analytical about myself and I have been all my life and every time I see something wrong it's like, oh, it's a major end of the world thing. No, it's not. You've just been taught, told a truth about yourself. You've found a truth about yourself. That's a great thing. That's a, you know, if, if our children were brought up in love, every time our child comes to us and said, Daddy, I noticed that today I wasn't very loving, you go... Wow, that's 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 an amazing thing that you just did. To know that by yourself. That's that's just incredible. Remember what Mary said today to you. We have not been taught about love. We haven't. You you've had no uni degree, you've had no prep school in love even. Let's be honest, there was no parent who ever said anything to you. There was no teacher or anything that said anything to you. There was no like, high school teacher, no college, no university, no one in your work environment has ever talked to you about the principles involved with love. Uh, even in most relationships, nobody's ever talked about it. So, so how can you be expected to know? You can't be expected to know, but you need to see where you are. And developing the will to educate yourself, that's what we're doing this week. We're trying to give you an education in love. One of the very first educations in love is to analyse yourself without judgement. <laughs> Another education in love. Allow yourself to look at the reasons why you don't want to change. Another education in love. Examine your way in which you're using your will. Is it force, forcing yourself? Is it willpower or is it actually using your will? Another education in love. See them as that. This is all great education in love. You won't find this education in love anywhere. Like, but, but this is prep school. This is, like, this is, in, this is kindergarten in love, right? And, and, we, and we need to stop judging ourselves and just say, well, that's where I am. It's where, that's where I am because like, no one in this world knows really much about love. Right? So see, that's where you are. Understand that's where you are. Honour the fact that it's where you are. Be kind to yourself about the fact that's where you are. But don't let yourself off the hook and say, oh, that's be now that that's where I am, that's where I'm going to stay. <laughs> Does that make sense? So that's what I would encourage you to do with our course over the next few days. So engage the process. We're trying to give you an education about love and let yourself absorb it. Let yourself feel about it. Let yourself go through this process with us. Sound good? That's what we would like to see you do. And honestly, by the end of the week, you'll be feeling a bit differently if you engage it that way. You won't, you'll be less judgmental. Instead of going around in the world and seeing everything that's wrong with you and then going, oh, look at it, I'm terrible, I'm bad, I might as well just give up. You'll remember Mary's talking, you go, no, giving up, that's one of the things to avoid. <laughs> so I can't do that. So what, what should I do instead of that? You, you'll start to remember these things. Does that make sense? And your spirit guides will be able to go, pop some thoughts into your mind about what you could do in this situation now that you've had some education in love, even intellectually, it's possible. But, but without the education, it's not going to be possible. So love the process of educating yourself in love. Instead of going, oh no, it's just another thing that's wrong with me, <laughs> you know? It's great to know things that we never knew before. It's great to know them. 
I just like my whole life has been like this, knowing the next thing, knowing the next thing that I need to learn about love is like paramount importance to me. If I then thought, oh, I look at that next thing, I go, oh, it's probably that. Oh, boy, look at me, I'm not that. And, and then I just went into this downward spiral, you know, into, you know, trying to cheer myself up about that, using food and addictions. You'd, you'd be, I'd be sitting out here, the big fat slob like that, like trying to get these addictions met that I can't get met and not being able to teach anybody a single thing because I hadn't learned anything myself. Right? And the best thing you can learn to do is to be a student of love. Student of love. That's what we want to be. And that's, that's been my passion for all of my life. Being a student of love. And eventually, you'll start connecting to other people, connecting to God, and, you, and once you receive more and more of God's love, the student part of love is easier. Right? But this world's got so much opposition to it. Honestly, you've lived in it, you know. You know how much opposition there is. Like many of us are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. How many of you are older? 70, 80. Right? And no one's ever educated you about love. <laughs> you go, what? Like every bit of happiness you've ever had in your life has always been associated with love. Every bit of unhappiness that you've always had in your life has generally also always been associated with love and yet nobody has taught you about love. Isn't that sad? So, so instead of punishing yourself for it, go, okay, I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. And once I learn, once I understand, once I know, once I live in it, then I'll be able to help others learn. Well, I'll be able to help more students become a student like myself. That's what I'd like to encourage you to do. So use this week to do that. Yeah? Yes. Good. Yes. Okay, well let's have some let's have some dinner.